How do you stay on flipping science? We're looking at triglycerides. So science understands we're going to look at um, edible oils and fats, esters of Procan 123 trial trial, which is also known as glycerol, and various carboxylic acids, so draw the structural formula of an edible oil or fat. Um, triglycerides can be hydrolyzed to produce propane 1, 2, 3 trial and various carboxylic acids. Uh, triglycerides may be saturated or unsaturated, so describe and explain the use of bromine or iodine solutions to determine the degree of unsaturation in a compound, and explain how uh, the degree of unsaturation causes differences in the melting points of edible oils and fats. And finally, liquid triglycerides can be converted into triglycerides of high melting points. This is looking at margarine production. So, let's start at the start. Um, edible oils and fats are esters of propane 1, 2, 3 triol. So, this is a triglyceride here. So, we've got a propane 1, 2, 3 triol backbone, and then we have three fatty acids attached to that. So, we see that over, over here. So, its systematic name is propane 1, 2, 3 triol, or propane 1, 2, 3 triol, but normally it's just referred to as glycerol. So, there's a glycerol backbone and three fatty acids attached to that. Now, the difference between a fat and an oil is just the uh, state of it at room temperature. So, fats are solid at room temperature, oils are liquid at room temperature, and we'll see where that comes from later on. So, the carboxylic acids that are attached to the glycerol backbone are known as fatty acids. Um, they're usually unbranched, which means there's no carbons coming off the sides, um, and they usually contain an even number of carbon atoms. That number is usually between 12 and 20. So, let's do an example question. So this question says, draw a fat produced from this fatty acid. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the glycerol backbone. And I'm going to start over here because it's drawn this way, so it'll make it a bit easier. So we need three carbons. Okay, then we need to put hydrogens on here. So two on the first one, one on the second one, two on the third one. So it's important to remember that fats are esters, so they're triesters. So we need to put in an ester group. So C to the O to the C double O. Okay, so now we have our ester group. And now we can attach to that the number of carbons that we need uh, for this fatty acid. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're going to go, we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, and then we just repeat that two more times. Okay. Now, um, esters can be hydrolyzed. We've looked at this previously. So you can hydrolyze a triglyceride as well. It's just a triester, so it's three ester groups. And when you do that, you produce um, glycerol and you produce your fatty acids. Now, depending on whether you do this under acidic or basic conditions, you'll get different products. Um, if you do it under acidic conditions, you'll return your three carboxylic acids, so the three fatty acids will be returned. If you do it under basic conditions, you'll produce carboxylic salts. And that's how you make soap. And we're going to look at how soap is made a bit later on in a different video. Now we have to talk about saturation. So if a fatty acid is saturated, that means it has only single bonds all the way through. So carbon-carbon single bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds all the way through. Um, if a fatty acid is unsaturated, that means it has at least one carbon-carbon double bond present. If there is more than one carbon-carbon double bond, we would call it a polyunsaturated fatty acid. The way to remember it, if something is saturated, then it's completely covered. So this way we're completely covered with as many hydrogens as we can possibly have for the number of carbons that we have. Whereas this one isn't saturated because we're missing two hydrogens by having a carbon-carbon double bond present. Now this has an effect on melting point. Now normally if a triglyceride contains saturated chains of a reasonable length, then that makes it solid. Um, if it has an unsaturated bond, then that reduces the melting point and it's more likely to be a liquid at room temperature. Now let's have a talk about why that happens. So let's have a look at why unsaturation is important. The more unsaturated your fatty acids are, the lower the melting point. And what this means is the more likely you are to be a liquid at room temperature. The reason for that is every carbon-carbon double bond you introduce introduces a kink. So it changes the angle um, of the carbon chain and you introduce a kink that comes off at a 120 degree angle compared to the other parts there. So you can see here um, in this uh, carbon chain here, we can see where we've got our carbon-carbon double bond, we get this kink being introduced. What that means is that when you have um, unsaturated fatty acids near each other, they don't pack together very tightly. Whereas if you have saturated fatty acids, they pack together really, really tightly. And that makes it very easy for dispersion forces to act between each molecule. And it's very important for dispersion forces, remember we're talking about um, 
we are talking about intermolecular forces. So the dispersion forces acting between the chains, they're readily available here because um, the electrons can just pull at one end or the other and they sit fairly close to each other. So the dipole being introduced by one fatty acid chain can be picked up by the other fatty acid chain really easily. Whereas if there is a kink, that means the fatty acid chains don't pack together. Now I'm using packing here um, you know, you know, as a term, but the fatty acid, they just don't pack together very well. So that means the chains are further apart and that means the dispersion forces are going to be weaker. So because the dispersion forces are weaker, that reduces the amount of energy required to separate the molecules and that in turn reduces the uh, melting point. So, the more unsaturated, the lower the melting point because the chains don't pack together as tightly and that reduces the strength of the dispersion forces that are acting. So we can do ex an experiment to determine how unsaturated a fatty acid chain is. And the way that we do that is by using bromine or iodine solutions. We're going to look at using bromine water, which is the most common one that we do in the lab. So the bromine water is a brown colour. If you add that to a substance that has a carbon-carbon double bond, you get what we call bromination occurring. And that removes the brown colour of the bromine and your solution returns colourless. If you have only single carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-hydrogen bonds present, um, you don't have any carbon-carbon double bonds, then you don't get decoloration of the bromine water and it stays a brown colour. So when we're showing this um, in a reaction, the way you would do that is you, um, where you have your carbon-carbon double bond, you break one of those bonds on either carbon and you add a bromine to each of them. So one bromine molecule per carbon-carbon double bond gets used up. Now, if you've got more than one carbon-carbon double bond in your fatty acid chain, that means you need to use more bromine water to decolor it, uh, to decolorize the chain. So you keep on adding more and more. So if you have uh, one substance with one mole of carbon-carbon double chains in, you'll need one mole of bromine to decolorize it. If you have two, then you need two moles of bromine to decolorize it. So the more bromine you need to add, the more unsaturated your chains are. So let's look at some videos of the bromine water test. Um, and as always, thanks to Resource for these videos. So over here I'm going to show you the positive test. So we've got our bromine water sitting down the bottom of our conical flask and on top of that we have our triglyceride. So now we're going to play the video. Um, so we're going to come in and shake it. And as it shakes, we should see that the brown colour from the bromine water starts to disappear. So you go from brown to colourless with the presence of a carbon-carbon double bond. So we can see now the brown colour has gone, disappeared completely. So now we have a colourless solution. Over here we have a negative test, so a similar idea, we have uh, bromine water present in there. This time our triglyceride, our triglyceride is saturated. So there's no carbon-carbon double bonds for the bromine water to act upon, so there's no decoloration of the solution, so it just stays that brown colour. So here's an example question. Draw the product of reaction of the triglyceride below with bromine water. So I'm going to start with my glycerol backbone. Okay, put in my H's. The bonds are getting a bit sloppy, that should be a bit higher. All right, C to the O to the C double O. In this case, we're putting the oxygens above. So C to the O to the C double O, making sure I've got my ester group present. Okay, now we need to do the uh, chains and show bromination where it's occurring. So in our first one, we've got four carbons. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to fill in my hydrogens now. Okay, now I'm going to do my second carbon. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons in the chain. So let's draw those in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on carbon four and five, that's where we have our double bond. So one, sorry, of the chain. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now instead of having the double bond, we're going to put in our bromines. So one bromine and our second bromine. And now I'm going to fill in the rest of the hydrogens. Now let's have a look at our last chain. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be a carbon. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So let's draw those in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. On carbons 2 and 3, we're going to have bromine, so 1, 2, and so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6, so bromine, Br, and now I need to fill in the rest of my hydrogens.
Okay, so now I've drawn the triglyceride. Um, obviously my handwriting is awful, but you get the idea. Wherever you have a carbon-carbon double bond, you need to add a bromine on either end of the double bond. So now we need to talk about margarine production. So if you have a liquid triglyceride, you can turn it into a solid triglyceride by hydrogenating double bonds. Um, so by doing that, you increase the melting point. What you're doing there is you're removing the kinks from the carbon chains that we talked about before. So by hydrogenating the bonds, you get rid of that change in angle and you return to having relatively straighter chains. The more straighter chains you have, the more solid your triglyceride is going to be. The way that you do this is that you take, your, um, take an oil, you add hydrogen to it under pressure at an increased temperature and in the presence of a catalyst. And in this case, the catalyst is finely divided nickel. So the hydrogenation hydro, um, hydrogenates the double bond, so the carbon-carbon double bond. So at either end of the carbon-carbon double bond, you add an extra hydrogen. So very similar to bromination that we just had before. So let's look at how you make margarine. So you crush the plant or the seeds of the plant to make your oil. Um, you remove the impurities from the oil. You add a bit of sodium hydroxide to help, uh, help with the process. Often it's bleach, so that removes some of the, color chain, the colors from the oils. Uh, then you filter it, and then you here it's chucked into a vacuum to get rid of some odors. Then, this is the key bit that we care about. So you bubble through hydrogen into the oil um, under pressure, so this is done in sealed containers under high pressure, and in the presence of the nickel catalyst and with heat. When you do that, you change the liquid triglyceride, you turn it into a bit more of a solid. Um, you can filter out the catalyst then, and any other suspended matter that comes out. You can then blend that with other oils to, um, that can make it a bit softer if you're blending it, or you can blend different oils together so you can get different flavors joining together. Um, then you can ace, add some whey, some colors, some flavors, some vitamins, and then add um, some emulsifying agents, and then you get your margarine produced. So with the hydrogenation, you need to be able to talk about um, why certain processes occur. In particular, why you increase the pressure. Well, if you increase the pressure, you increase the number of collisions between uh, reactor particles, and that increases the reaction rate. Um, since you're going to have more successful collisions per unit time, if you have a higher pressure, you have essentially a higher concentration, so you have more particles per unit area, and that increases the reaction rate. Um, if you increase the temperature, you increase the number of collisions per unit time, and you're also increasing the number of collisions with the required activation energy for the reaction to occur. So that increases the number of successful collisions per unit time, and therefore the reaction rate. The presence of the nickel catalyst means that you don't need to use as much um, energy for the reaction to occur because you're reducing the activation energy uh, for the reaction to occur by providing an alternate energy pathway. So that's why increased pressure, increased temperature, and the nickel catalyst are used to produce the margarine. So, at Flipping Science, we looked at triglycerides. That's the Flipping Science Day. See ya.